majority of children, 70% of our Catholic children, are placed in our own foster services. So whilst placement stability indicates for the Catholic generally relate to all of the Catholic children, some of whom are placed in residential care, some of whom are placed back to their parents. The indicator largely does relate to the 77 there to this service, and it, and it is generally good. What you do notice Seven uh, at the table on training is that uh, the performance indicator um, on the right, 62 is 6.6%, and, and that's indicating uh, a low number of children who have three or four moves um, coming into care, and that's a lower number, lower percentage than the previous year. So the concern you have about that is that really is quite low. You can say oh, that's great, you've got a stable placement out there, but you could also say there's not a lot of movement where there might, there might or there should be. Um, what, it, what it says to me, in having a broader knowledge of placement stability across uh, our looked after children, is that there are some children remaining in care for longer, for longer than they should, uh, and therefore are showing a higher level of placement might otherwise have if they had care earlier. And there's a project that I referred to um, on the right in 2.12, section 2.12, which is about how we recognize when children are in care longer. And um, with adoption grant money, we have commissioned a project to really focus on moving those children who are quite happy and content and well placed through the permanence, either through adoption We know the children are, we've got our target group, and we've got our project to help them get out and we've got some questions about that project um, if people have them. So, so they're the kind of main things I wanted to highlight um, around performance. It, it's also worth making reference to, given what I'm saying about difficulties in recruitment, that we've joined this Northwest Consortium here with one of six authorities in the Northwest. Um, who bid for uh, a government grant to expand the foster care. We're really delighted we got uh, involved in this um, because it not only looks at how we find in the community more potential foster carers for our children, it also looks at a much stronger approach to understanding what retains and develops foster carers that we have. And given that we're so reliant on the ones we've got, we need to make sure that we keep them make sure they're in the best position to give the best care for our most vulnerable group. So it's a really good project to be involved in, um, and it really is going to focus on what everybody says about what works um, and get some way behind how we support the foster care. Um, I've been asked as well just to, to highlight a couple of other areas that are related. Um, that's residence order and special guardianship. children may not formally enter uh, a fostering situation, but may be <coughs> equally vulnerable but dealt with by private law. And the council does have uh, a scheme that supports financially some people who are providing care for someone else's children, secure through residence. And sometimes uh, the council actually uh, makes the case about the outcome
is about people wanting to be assured that they're going to have that ongoing support from us where we have that high level of intervention. The council's had a very strong policy. We have a lot of legal advice on our policy. I think that my colleagues will be sure to remember the table. A lot of advice um, on, on this policy. It's a very strong policy, and regionally, uh, it's had a lot of support. Regional colleagues and other authorities have said, we like how your policy works. It stood the test of time and legal challenges um, in a number of situations, and we have confidence in it. But we will, we will always review with each new piece of uh, case review and case law where we stick with that, because as you may have picked up, there's been a number of uh, issues that other local authorities and climate change have worked with us on this particular subject. better help them see from a foster carer's point of view 
what you need to do to do the job, what the job is like to do, um, and have them relate that that's a bit more where they are in the case. And if they've got something more to give in terms of a support for children, these would be the ways we'll help to engage them. So I, I can't say to you, I know I'm going to get the outcome of this, but I think it has the right ingredients given the research it's based on to take a school that gives the best chance to find those lost Second part of your question. What do we do about it? I, I think what we do about it is we make sure our reputation is good because most foster carers will tell you they would much rather work with local authority than private agency. We're up at the lowest dues per look at a child in the region of agency foster care is 6%. So we're doing it for the right reasons already, but we must get complacent in that way.
so that's one area of the short term, one area of the long term. Um, fostering to adopt is, is a developing area, and I'll talk about it a bit more in the next report. But that's where we're we're asking people to take something of this because um, if people are wanting to adopt children, uh, it's really difficult if children come into their lives and don't stay. And the risk here is if you're fostering to adopt, there's still a core process that might determine that the child is back to their natural parents. But we generally select the cases very carefully on the basis that you know we've had this parent before, previous children have been adopted, there isn't evidence of any change. So that's a fairly new one. Um, something called temporary approval is usually when there's an immediate crisis, we've got a family member who's suitable, and we'll, we'll temporarily approve them, subject to approval and testing. Um, that does involve crisis where it's just in that temporary approval and you turn them to balance and then they're the right home and hope that the child is in the care. And then connected care is used to be called kinship carers. based on some of our most experienced workers who are teenagers. And 
Okay. 